Today we'll learn how to make absolutely dramatic black and white conversions in Photoshop using gradient maps. So without any further ado, let's get started. Now the very first absolutely obvious thing that we're going to do in Photoshop is click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose gradient map. Now as soon as you do that, with the left hand side as black and the right hand side as white, have a look how dramatic of a result you get. Now the problem with this result is that with the latest versions of Photoshop, a different method was introduced and that was perceptual. It just crushes the dark areas. For some images, it might work brilliantly, but for some other images, it just might crush the dark areas. So instead of perceptual, let's go ahead and choose classic. You can also try linear, but that's going to be boring. Let's just choose classic and have a look. Isn't that absolutely amazing? Now, if you directly did convert it using a black and white adjustment layer, that's also possible. Now, keep in mind, this is just another way of doing things and creates a different kind of and different quality of result. So let's choose black and white adjustment layer. This is different and this is different. And in my opinion, for this image, this gradient does a better job and creates more contrasty look. Now, it does not end here. You get more controls. As soon as you double click on the icon of the gradient, the gradient map properties open and as soon as you single click on the gradient bar, make sure first of all on the left hand side you have black and on the right hand side you have white. If you don't, just single click on the slider on the left and select black as the color and single click on the slider on the right and just choose white as the color. As simple as that. Or set the foreground and the background to black and white and just select the first one which is foreground to background. Now, here's the great part. You can control the balance between the whites and the blacks by just moving these sliders. And have a look, it's increasing the darks. And if you move the rightmost white slider to the left, it'll of course increase the whites. Now, besides these two sliders, there's also one more special thing right in here. This diamond. As soon as you click on one of these, you will see this diamond which will control the balance between both. Have a look at it, my friend. Isn't that just amazing? So if you take this diamond to the right, the shadows will grow towards the highlights. And if you take this diamond to the left, vice versa will happen. The highlights will grow towards the shadows. So we're gonna take it a little more towards the right. See, just focus on the face, focus on the drama it is creating. Maybe we can stop here. And if you want a little more highlight, just move the rightmost point to the left. Now we don't wanna move it too far that we just blow out the details. We have to keep that in mind. So probably we'll stop right here. That looks fine to me. And you can move it even further and see what happens. Once you're satisfied, hit OK and have a look. Just by making these tiny adjustments, we are pretty much done. So here's the before, here is the after. Just look at the conversion. You will love it. Instead, compare it with simple black and white. So this is the simple black and white adjustment. Now, of course, you can control the colors, different colors, the brightness, and the, the, actually the luminosity of different colors in the image. But compared with this one, it was so much quicker, creates so much more drama. And if you want, on top of that, you can play with the colors. And let me share with you this trick. You can simply create a black and white adjustment layer right here on top of that, change the blend mode to luminosity. That way it's no more a black and white. If you turn this gradient off, this is no more a black and white, but it gives you the opportunity to play with the luminosity of different colors. So now when you turn on the gradient map, which is creating the black and white, you can just go to the properties of this actual black and white adjustment layer, make sure its blend mode is set to luminosity, and then you can just play with different colors in the image. So let's say what he's wearing is a little bluish and you wanna make it brighter, you can do that just by doing this. And then you can just play with the magentas and you can play with the cyan. And there are so many things you can experiment right here. But for right now, I'm just gonna delete it. Now this should not stop you from experimentation. Try it all. Even if somebody says something against it, just try it. And if it works for you, use it. You are in control here. Let me share with you one more example and then we will move forward. So let's say you wanted to convert this as well to black and white. Click on the adjustment layer icon and then choose what? gradient map. Make sure it's a gradient from black to white. Now, keep in mind, perceptual might crush the dark areas. So instead, let's go ahead and choose classic, single click on it, and then just start playing with these. And as soon as you do that, have a look at what effect it creates. Just by doing these tiny little things, it creates so much more dimension <laughs> into these black and whites. I think this looks perfect, hit OK. And how much time did we give it? Just so quickly, you can create some interesting black and white conversions. Now let's move back to our first example. 
Now, since we have made it very contrasty, one of the side effects has been that his eyes have become very dark. So how do we fix that? Just above the background layer, not above the gradient map, because if we do, we would have less details to work with. Just above the background layer, create a curves adjustment layer. Now, simply take it up just like that. Let's minimize it. Select the mask of the curves, press Ctrl or Command I, take the brush, white as the foreground color, make sure it's a soft round brush and then just paint on the eyes. That's all. Make sure opacity and fill are at 100, blend mode normal. Paint away the extras with black. And there you go, my friend. Have a look. Here's the before, here's the after. Makes a hell lot of difference. We left out this area, so let's paint that black. Don't forget to name the layers. Organization is very, very important. If you want to make it even more dramatic, why not make the background absolutely black? Let's just do it. For that, we need to make a selection of the subject. And for that, again, we need to select the subject layer. Click on any of these three tools, the quick selection tool, object selection tool, or the magic wand tool. And as soon as you do that at the top, you will see select subject. Now, Photoshop does a fantastic job. If you want to take the time, you can use the pen tool. You can use the quick selection tool, whatever you like. After you have done that, simply create a solid color adjustment layer and you can choose black. Now, it has filled the subject. We wanted the exact opposite. So select the mask, press control or command I. Now, this is all nice, but there's a problem. We want the darks of the subject to go black as well so that they merge well with that of the background. How do we do that? Simply just create one more gradient map or you can just make a copy of this one. So with the black and white conversion gradient map selected, press Ctrl or Command J to make a duplicate of it. And as soon as you do that, it just merges so well, but we don't want it all throughout. If I say this is harsh, it would be an understatement. So select the mask, press Ctrl or Command I, Take the brush white as the foreground color. Make sure it's a soft round brush. You can also decrease the flow if you wish to, if you wish to paint slowly and gradually and have more control over the transition. But I'm just going to quickly do it with 100%. Let's make it smaller so that we can paint right in here, a little bit here. And there you go, my friend. Isn't that fantastic? Now, what you can also do is that have a look at the beard. It's just not looking real. So select the mask of the black fill solid color adjustment layer. Take the brush with black as the foreground color. Just paint this area. And let's try to come back to the mask of black and white conversion copy. And first of all, let's try to paint this area in white. See if we can make it black. There you go. Now, if you need more, you can always come back to the mask of the black fill. We can decrease the flow in here to about 10%. There you go. Now, if you do want to add the holy grail of drama, how can we forget? Camera raw, right? That's one of the things that sets Photoshop apart. So select the topmost layer, press Ctrl, Alt, Shift and E to create a stamp visible layer. That's simply a merged layer of everything that you see on the canvas right now. Let's name this camera raw. Make sure to convert this layer into a smart object so that we can change the values later. Let's go to filter, convert for smart filters, hit OK. Now filter, camera raw filter. One of the tricks to add more drama is simply decreasing the highlights and then increasing the whites to compensate for it. Let's take a look at before and after just by doing this change. Here's the before, here's the after. Have a look, see the change in the depth? Now, there are some areas which are very bright, so we can just decrease the overall exposure. That's about right. Now, keep in mind, we are creating art here. This is not photojournalism, where you have to make sure that you're not losing details in the shadows or the highlights. You can completely blow this out if that's the kind of art you create. So similarly, I think that if we take blacks to the left hand side, it just makes it more interesting. So let's keep it at about minus 12. 12 is nice. Now, here's the most dangerous ingredient, and that is clarity. It's like salt. You just need to know the right amount. If you go too high, it just becomes, oh my gosh, this is HDR vomit, really. Because when it's too high, I'm, I'm giving you a warning right now, if it's too high, <laughs> it will make you really vomit. So let's go lower on this, about 16. Texture as well. We will increase it slight bit. And there we have the complete drama. Hit OK. See the change here? Here's the before, here's the after. I absolutely love it all over the place. But since we are humans, we get overboard. So let's decrease the opacity because it's, it is looking like too much in some places. You can also use masks if you like. So just to be on the safer side, let's go for 52. And there you have it. Such a dramatic black and white conversion. So that's how you use the gradient map method to create dramatic black and whites. All you have to do is to simply create a gradient map adjustment layer and make sure it is a gradient from black to white. That's it. You can switch between the perceptual 
and classic and see what looks good to you and then you can single click on the gradient bar and adjust the sliders and the diamond right here now apart from that you can do whatever adjustments you like you can create a black and white adjustment layer and set that to luminosity for color adjustment you can create a camera raw adjustment you can use curves you can use solid color adjustment layers change the background do whatever you want but the fundamental concept is simply creating a gradient map and then choosing black to white that's all. I hope you enjoyed this video and if you did, make sure to give us a like and also don't forget to subscribe and not just subscribe. Ring the bell so that you my friend don't miss any other future tips, tricks or tutorials. Thank you so much for watching. I'll see you in my next fun till then. Stay tuned and make sure that you keep creating.